reading the, this is not the first time I've been to the Hilton Awards, and, and reading the last will and testament of Conrad Hilton is a very moving thing. Uh, um, it certainly says a lot about the notion of hospitality, and which many people in my country and I'm sure the world associate with the family name, but it's been really instructive to, to learn more about, the, about Mr. Hilton and about the family and what they've done with this order to go forth and do good. And um, I think it would sound self-important to thank the jurors. I don't know how to do that correctly. I thought a lot about it, actually. So the jurors will have to guess what I think of them <laughs> and what we think of them. Although I would like to say something as a film fan about at least one of the, one of the jurors who's a great actress and a great activist. But then I can go on and on and think about people in the jury who help stamp out the small box and the, the list goes on. And uh, I'm very, we're all very grateful. And uh, there are, when I say we are all very grateful, um, some of us you get to see because we can end up here in Geneva and join tonight, but there are really uh, probably about 2,000 people now working with Partners in Health across the world. Many of them are listening tonight. Um, I'm told that this is going to be cast um, on the web. And one of the things that we've done in the last few years is to link all of our sites through the internet. So many people who work with us, even in Haiti and Rwanda, and certainly in Peru and Siberia and elsewhere, are, are listening. And uh, Ophelia, Jim, and I accept this award on, on behalf of many, many co-workers and, of course, um, what now probably amount to millions of patients. I, I would also like to th thank the staff of the Foundation. The, we've gotten to know some of you quite well. Um, I, I confess that a couple years ago I was uh, invited to speak at the at one of the foundation meetings where the prize was awarded and I, I joked at a dinner, not formally in front of the whole uh, gathering, that we were always the bridesmaids and never the brides. So tonight's very special for us because we know that we have gone through a very um, intense vetting process. And we are extremely proud to join the other prize winners um, and what they mean. We're especially grateful, of course, to those of you from the Foundation who have come to our field sites and have spent so much time um, looking at our work and also describing it to the jurors. And again, I know I shouldn't spend too much time on this, but we're very grateful for the hard work that goes into choosing the people who will receive a prize of this magnitude. And again, what a great thing it is to join the uh, previous award winners. It's especially meaningful, of course, to receive the Happy Birthday 10th Anniversary Hilt Prize. There are other changes in the prize, which I think, I don't know if they've been announced formally, but it's a very significant donation and made 50% more so this past year. Thank you again. And uh, we're grateful to be in Geneva, a city uh, that we know very well. And I was very shocked to learn that this beautiful building was not built for us tonight and with the mayor. And I know this building's been here a while, but thank you. We thought you built it for us. And we're very grateful for that as well. I am uh, not going to say any more thanks, not because of our lack of gratitude, but because um, I, I hope it's obvious how grateful we are. And to, to, to focus and set on something else, in the brief time I have here. I will only be an hour or so. Um, in fact, I know that everyone gathered here, most people gathered here, spent the day with us. And uh, we had a very rich, and vivid uh, day. In fact, it started for us uh, with a wonderful brunch um, a day and a half ago. And since then, um, when we got to meet uh, wonderful people engaged in this work at the jurors, and, ha and, and it was a great way to, to deep plane and, and, and feel connected again to Hill. Since that time, we've had a very stimulating discussion, learned a lot. I, I learned a great deal today, and so I'm not going to add another, another talk. 
Uh, instead, I want to tell you a little bit about what it's like to work in an organization like Partners in Health. And you, you got to see uh, a very, thank you very much for the, the video. I, I said I wasn't going to say thank you anymore, but um, I just saw the video for the first time tonight as well. And you got to meet Ophelia and Jim and Tom White and myself. Um, but there are many people here tonight representing our work in Haiti, Peru, Rwanda, and Russia. And they wouldn't want me to introduce them uh, formally and to thank them. Um, but I think that given that our co-workers struggle so mightily to make common cause with people living in poverty, and given that our co-workers know that this is very difficult work, because it's not just about humanitarian work, but also, uh, as has been noted, about social justice work, about changing what's wrong with the world. When Judy uh, introduced this evening, and, and she was echoed by Steve Hilton, she mentioned that there's never been a greater, greater need for humanitarian work. Of course, this is a problem. If there's more need for humanitarian work, it means that our world is, is, is still marred by social inequalities, by, problem, by poverty, by violence. And all of this, by and large, is human-made. We know this. It's been pointed out by the other award winners. It certainly comes through in the materials that were gathered for tonight's award. And we feel that we're, we're living these problems in our work, uh, whether they, that work be in inner city, Boston, in Rwanda, in Haiti, in Siberia. And so I just wanted to mention the kind of people that we get to meet. I mentioned already our, our wonderful breakfast, but how about the people who've come here from each of these sites? Um, I, I could tell you about my close friend and co-worker, a Peruvian physician who has spent, who not only is trained in medicine but in public health, and has spent the last 11 years of his life working for the poor of his home country. And a doctor who has built up what is probably Peru's largest health-related NGO, not by only focusing on his NGO, our sister organization, but by supporting the public health system. A man who has been quiet and steadfast for over a decade. I could spend an hour talking about him, or I could tell you about the woman who heads Partners in Health Russia, a cosmopolitan Muscovite who could have done anything she wanted with her life, been a brilliant research scientist, uh, which she was on her way to being. But instead, we met her in the middle of a crowded prison in Siberia. And no, she was not a prisoner. Um, and who has spent the last several years fighting for the rights of people who in her own country are not normally regarded any more than they are in ours, in mine rather. Uh, people who have committed crimes and now find, them, find themselves in prison and sick. I could talk for hours about her. I could talk about the director of our Haiti effort, a woman who at 18 years of age survived a massacre inside of her church during mass, and who instead of becoming a cynical and bitter person, she did become a refugee, by the way, instead of becoming a cynical and bitter person, uh, came, became the leader of an effort to deliver healthcare services in her home country, and uh, who has, for all of her adult life since the time when she was 18, worked on these projects. I could tell you about a woman who's here, who's been working on behalf of developing partners in health, uh, that is raising money for partners in health, who had been working there for some months before I really had a really good conversation with her and found out that she had done her doctoral research at Harvard on slavery and decided that no, she did not want to be a full-time academic but wanted to serve the destitute sick and so join Partners in Health. I could talk about a French lawyer who, by the way, who would give de Gaulle a month of money, uh, who, uh, after raising a family of her own, uh, decided that she wanted to help 
uh, in Haiti and has since become a passionate, and, and passionate activist on behalf of food security and primary education for the most destitute. She's here tonight, too. I could talk about people we meet, like an American nurse who, as a young widow, found, uh, found herself with a great deal of wealth and had to decide how to raise a large family of her own children, but also to be involved in them with the rest of the world and ended up uh, working on projects around Africa. She's here tonight as well. I could talk about a person who joins us from Rwanda, another American actually, who was a very successful businesswoman in Hollywood, then New York, who one day found herself walking through a supermarket in one of those two cities, I don't remember which, and hearing about the genocide in Rwanda, about which we'll hear more later, and said, this can't be true, this can't have happened, and decided at that time to leave what she was doing and end up in Rwanda. She went to, to Sudan as a volunteer and later ended up in Rwanda, where she is uh, working on behalf of people with AIDS in that country, and she's here tonight. Um, I could talk about friends from the World Health Organization. You know, if you dig deeper, yes, there are friends from the World Health Organization, but you'll find that one, an anthropologist, worked for years in Haiti before deciding that he wanted to do something more than academic work, but to understand how poverty and inequality promote illness and um, what we could do to study that and understand it. He's here tonight. Or another one who was a professor of religion in an affluent um, American College and decided that he would join Jim Kim and after having worked with us for many years here in Geneva to work on the promotion of the right to treatment for AIDS. The list goes on and on. And I, will, I, I, I do have to add, correct one uh, confusion, however. The, the attractive young woman who is with me tonight is indeed my biological mother. Someone asked me that earlier. Thanks, Mom, for coming. Um, then there are the leaders of Partners in Health, and they don't want me to talk about them. That doesn't make me, that doesn't surprise me. As many of you heard um, Jim and Kim talk today. Whenever we hear Jim talk and see his mind in action, we, many of us feel a great deal of hope. Um, I still do after having worked with him for 20, 20 years, but the very selfless director of Partners in Health, um, who has since the time she would, she likes to change the date, but let me just say, for 20 something years she's been working in Haiti and on these projects. Um, and then there are the people who are listening, uh, who work on procuring medications, on answering letters, on answering the phone, on making sure that our partners in Haiti, in Peru, in Siberia, and Chiapas, and Guatemala, and Rwanda have the tools to do the work. Together, this small group of people, which is not so small anymore, have fought back against poverty and inequality, which are, as, as we know, not God-given, created by nature problems in the world today. Just like the violence in Rwanda in 1994, about which we're going to hear more, these problems are created by us humans. And the good news about understanding that is, of course, it means that we can address these problems. These are problems that we can reasonably hope to fix. And for, the, for us at Partners in Health to receive the Hilton Prize means a great deal, and not simply because it's such a generous award, but also because in order to move forward, Social justice, which involves disrupting the way the world is today. We're going to need all the help we can get. We're going to need the support of people who themselves, like you, like me, are very privileged, who can get on a plane and go to Geneva, um, but who have decided that they're not satisfied with the world the way it is. There are serious wrongs, social wrongs, that we can and must address together. We're very proud to be part of this larger family of Hilton Prize winners and count on you 